The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. We're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ask for Candy, where a bunch of powerhouse men and women get together online to talk about love, sex, relationships, and what it means to be amazing on the daily. Who I am, I am CandiceHarperLoveCoach.com. I help hardworking women and couples who have survived abuse be vibrant, alive, magnetic, and passionate while creating healthy, intimate relationships. And I'm coming to you from the amazing Gotham Podcast Studios, where just everybody, the whole staff is fantastic. They really are. Right? Yes. I love being here. It just feels so profesh. Yes. It feels so good to be here. I see Natasha was with us before we went live with Armed Radio. Joe just joined us. Hi, Joe. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, Joe? Joe's one of our regulars. I love it when Joe's there. Mm-hmm. And um, the Armed Radio people are now with us, which I'm so excited. And this is also the Pride Show, everybody. It is. Right? Yes. Right? Happy Pride. Happy Pride. So it's it's basically the, the closure, right? Yes, Because yes. all of June was Global Pride Month, yes. and it was all about love and celebration. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, because the show falls on Monday, we had to close out on July 1st. But I feel like that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right? I love it. Thank Ain't nothing you. wrong with that. We do what we must as long as we show our, our solidarity and our love. Yes. Right? Fine year round, honey. Yes, yes. honey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and every year, whether I go to the celebration or not, right. the whole weekend, that song, Pride mm-hmm. of Deep, Deep Love, love yes. is always in my head. <laughs> that's funny. I just worked with the CNC yesterday. Oh, that's right. Yes. yes. That song, video. like... It's been in my head all weekend long. Yes. So I feel like I had my own internal mm-hmm. celebration. You know the song? Right? Huh? How does it go? All I only know that part. Pride, oh. a deep love. Pride. Like, that's, that's the part I know. Okay. People let me tell you. Okay. You, you remember? I don't know that part. Okay. <laughs> it's been, what, it came out in the 80s, right? Yeah, late 80s, like. early 90s, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think if I heard the whole song, I might, like, oh, I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good one. So in honor of Pride Month, and because I believe in inclusivity and representation, even though sometimes we get a little heteronormative around here, I had to bring on my gay husband. I've known each other for a long time, long time. right? Yes. I feel like you are my gay husband. You're my spirit husband. Yes. Same. You're, right? Same. Like kindred spirits. Yes. We are like family. You know how sometimes you meet someone and you, even if you don't see them all the time, they're like yes. like family from another world true. or something. It's Very weird. True. Very true. Yeah. Same tribe. Right? Yes. Same tribe. Yes. Whatever it is. We just have this thing where we click and love each other. And mm-hmm. you've been with me through some like crazy, amazing things. The shaving of my head and yes. all my tears. Yes. And like just so many things you've right. been there for. Yes. You See, too. Right? You too. You've been there for me. As oh, well. we you know. worked we used to work together on the Wendy Williams show. Yes, we did. That's yes. how we met. Yes. 2008? Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. See, good things did actually come out of that show. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> People are watching. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, before we get to that, though, for those of you out there, if you're a badass bachelor and you want to be on the summer series, I still have a couple dates left for mm-hmm. near the end of the summer. So, you know, we're going to, I'm kind of booked up for July. We wow. have some really cool guests coming mm-hmm. up for July. Oh, great. Okay. In August, I'm not fully booked just yet. Mm-hmm. So if, stick around and you can find out what the criteria is going to be okay. to become a badass bachelor. But in the meantime, I just want to um, call out the people who are listening on their TuneIn app on their smart device to Armed Radio, mm-hmm. or maybe you're in the garden on armedradioglobal.com. Okay. We're also on iHeartRadio, the replays. You can follow us and download your favorite shows. And for people who like to stream, you can go on Spotify and on Spreaker to listen. Or maybe you're live with the peeps here on Facebook. I see some people have sort of trickled in. My computer's moving a little slow. But you guys know that you're always part of the conversation. And you can always comment and ask questions. And, you know, we do the vulnerability quiz with all of our badass bachelors. (laughs) (laughs) Which I feel like, here's the thing. I was looking through the questions that I have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're just going to kick ass at it. Okay. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that's all it needs. And so, you know, I know with certain people... 
uh, has there been many people that I knew from? I mean, most of the people that have come on, I know on some level. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe not so well okay. or whatever. So you never know how someone's going to react to certain questions. Right. Okay. But when you bring on someone that you're close to and you know, like this is going to be right up your alley. Okay. okay. I'm not too worried. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pull up off Robert Walters on it. Right. <laughs> It's okay if you sometimes you shed a tear, right? <laughs> it's good for us. You gotta he you gotta feel it to heal it. Okay. So also, if during the show you guys have any questions and you're shy and you don't want to involve yourself in the live, you can email us at askforcandypodcast at gmail dot com. And you know, sometimes if it's a really good question, all the questions are good. There's no such thing yes. as a bad question. Yes. I will talk about it on a later show if I remember and I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> got all my ducks in a row. Right now is the time when we share. So I am going to share to the Ask for Candy podcast group. I want you guys to join the Ask for Candy podcast group. I also want you to join Armed Radio Group News because it's not just the Ask for Candy podcast. There's a whole bunch of other podcasts there, too. Mm -hmm. They have ones for, um, you know, single parents who are dating. They have wow. ones for people who are looking for a job if you're trying to switch up your career. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of different lifestyle podcasts, and they're a lot of fun. Amazing. My my friend, Rob Rosenthal, who I brought into armed radio he does a really good one on wednesdays called all you can eat which mm. is all about honey you know i love that right. one <laughs> is it about health and nutrition uh, no it's just about eating it's just wow. about food oh, like wow. he, he just talks about like he's sort of an anthony bourdain kind of type okay. you know and he just talks about his travels just shove it in your mouth no shove it, right? It. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know he talks about his experiences with food so you know i love that sort of thing <laughs> right okay so like I said, I'm CandiceHarperLoveCoach.com. For anybody who's new, my talent is conversation. My passion is personal growth. And my purpose is to teach and inspire radical self-acceptance in myself and others so that we can all have our best possible love life. And that is why this is a conversation. We're not here to hand down a bunch of dating or relationship rules okay. or rights and wrongs. Right. We're not here to shame your love situation. Our only intention mm -hmm. is to create audacious intimacy, seductive singlehoods, and healthy relationships. So tonight and every Monday night, we're going to do what we do, which is have a conversation that engages, educates, and or enlightens all of us mm -hmm. in the areas of love, sex, relationships, and vibrating high. And now I'm going to officially introduce my badass bachelor guest, D'Angelo Thompson, who is known for his mastery of beauty and quality aesthetic. He is also one of the entertainment industry's most sought after artisans. Originally from Mississippi, he grew up in Chicago, Illinois. D'Angelo always dreamed of one day taking the beauty industry by the reins, both nationally and internationally, and you have. Yes, and God. over the past two decades has done so in a phenomenal way. It is his personal vision to elevate his prof profession by creating a global brand slash community and empowering all of us to see and celebrate our beauty. I love that. Yes, right? Yes, it's yes. all about being able to celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. Everybody. I feel like the whole world would change if we That's all true. got that we Very could do true. that. Right? That's why I call it enhanced beauty. Yeah. You know, enhanced beauty is about not covering up. But enhancing. Enhancing what's there. Yes, yes. Right? Bring it out, bringing it out, like yes. letting the light shine. Mm -hmm. So as a professional, D'Angelo's expertise extends to beauty, bridal, editorial, commercial, film, promos, television, mm -hmm. producing, writing. Yes. You're a multi-passionate entrepreneur, yes, yes, which I is am. a very like, you know, it's. It, mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that we've only given ourselves permission to be. As yes. human beings, we yes. have a lot of you know, creativity and outlets that That's we true. can possibly have. We're not one dimensional creatures. Right. So we, we have layers, you know. I love it. Yes. And as a hair and makeup artist for guests and celebrities on the Wendy Williams show from 2008 to 2011, you earned three daytime Emmy nominations with a win for guest hair in 2010. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yay! We love that. <laughs> Most importantly, in over two decades, D'Angelo has developed a strong body of work, classifies him in the A list of beauty professionals. And some of your clients, which you had like, a uh, shit ton. I know. But yeah. I wanted to name just a few people. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So Aretha Franklin. Yes, May she rest in peace. Right? Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart. Yes, I've done his shows, a few of his shows. Really? Mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. Salma Hayek. Yes. And this one I really love. Carol Channing. Yes. You remember. <laughs> yeah, Wendy, I, yeah. <laughs> I love You remember so from the Wendy Williams show? She came on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I was doing her makeup and... I can honestly say there was such a connection there. It was really? so strange. And yeah. she was 90 at the time. Yeah. And Steve and I know I was doing the hair. She's like, I want a pineapple on the <laughs> top of my head. So she literally had this ponytail sitting 
and her hair was short. So yeah, it yeah. Like a pineapple. Oh and she goodness. went out and Wendy interviewed her. And I she, didn't remember the pineapple. And she talked about me for most of her segment. Did she? You remember that? No. We got to find it. No, yeah, we have to find yeah, it. it I do sweet. remember her being on the show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I've always just loved her. Like, she's just an icon. She's Another like, Aquarius. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can believe that. Yes. I can believe that. Joe says he is doing the damn thing talking about you. <laughs> and Alina joined us. And Jimmy. Jimmy is our guest next week. Jimmy's, oh, wow. a, Jimmy's a love coach. Oh. So that's going to be an interesting conversation, yes, right? Yes. So I might, you know, talk to Jimmy a little bit about my stuff. Sometimes I talk about my personal stuff. Hmm. We'll see what Jimmy has to has to offer. Transparency, right? Mm-hmm. Some nuggets of wisdom. I always say I'm the coach on the court. Yes, so yes. I not only love to coach, I love to be coach. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I feel like it's yeah. an important thing. Ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. Get ready, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, and then also Heidi Klum. I wanted to mention yes. that you worked with the gorgeous and the beautiful. Um, you've authored three lifestyle and beauty books. Mm-hmm. You organize yearly fundraisers to support AIDS research mm-hmm. and youth in- initiatives mm-hmm. and domestic violence awareness and LGBT, can I say Q awareness? Q, yes, okay. plus. Yes, plus, <laughs> yeah. right? I it love keeps that. growing, you know. Yes. <laughs> Because it's all about okay, We have to, yeah, now it'll be aliens eventually. Right? So. <laughs> we don't want anybody aliens. left out. No one. <laughs> yes. No, it's true. <laughs> Welcome, my sweetheart, my love. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Yes. Yeah. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. So you want to say hi to the people and tell them something personal about you? Or? Ah, yes. Hi, my name is D'Angelo Thompson. <laughs> I'm a working makeup artist author between New York City and L.A. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it, tell me something that you just like, that's like your, your, uh, that's a little bit of a secret about you or something that you really love or okay. something so like that. Really, Super it's personal. like, maybe obvious because you know me, but hmm. my guilty pleasure is observing people. Really? Not, not judging or analyzing, just observing yeah, yeah. how they live, how they function. And when I travel, I would say most of my travel, I'm like, where can I go where I can just sit at a cafe and watch people? Yeah. And my first book got inspired by, watching by just watching people in Paris. I yeah. started my first book there. And that's when the Euro was so high. Yeah. <laughs> so I could only have like coffee and a croissant right? at the cafe. Yeah. And you know, it was like $50 right, US. Right. It was well, $20 US. And I was yeah, thinking at the time, I was like, um, hmm. I'm like, uh, I hope they don't kick me out, but you can really sit and enjoy the time. Yeah. And that sparked my first book. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, people yeah. watching. People watching in Paris. No yes, less. yes. So Next time you do that, I'm coming with. Okay, calm. Yeah, because the last time I got a good people watching, and I think it was in Union Square. Okay. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> right? It's good. I did it's that good. today. Did you? Yes. I, I love sat that. for an hour and just kind of like watch people know, go by. Watch and then IG. Watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so, it's good. Yes. Yeah. Now, even if you don't live in a big city, I feel like like people watching is one of those things that, because you know, I'm all about connectivity. Yes. It's almost like, you know, because we spend so much time on our screens and in this digital world, yes. I don't think that we get enough or as much as we used to that sort of like uh, presence with each other. That's true. You know, That's and just like true. the meeting of strangers, the seeing of strangers and, and seeing our sameness. Yes. You know, it's so easy to like sort of segregate and separate ourselves right. when we're not actually seeing people on a regular yeah. basis. And we rarely make eye contact. And yeah. I noticed that. The, the when they have the moments of rare eye contact, yeah. it's really beautiful. Yeah, and whether it's flirtation or just acknowledging one another and saying hi, yeah. which is really nice as a human. Totally, <laughs> totally. Too, you know, so it's connectivity, yes. honey. You know, I'm all about that. I see Jerry just joined us. Jerry was our guest last week. He was fantastic. Hi, Jerry. Was a lot of fun. Are you ready to take the vulnerability quiz, my love? Exhale, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's going to be a snap. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll throw a couple softballs. Okay. What are you most passionate about? Ooh, I'm most passionate about creating, oh. whether it's writing or, uh, you know, I just pr- helped produce a film, executive produce a film called Burden. Oh. And now we're an Oscar qualifier for a short film. I oh, my gosh. I didn't tell you that. No, so, yeah. you didn't tell me that. So we premiered at ABFF in Miami. Okay. And then we'll be in, um, I'm sorry, in Atlanta for the Bronze Lens Festival. Oh, my gosh. Uh, in August. Yeah. So, yes. Honey, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's the universe so has been amazing. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I get that, like the, the that feeling of being able to just express yourself, be self-expressed. That's something yes. to really feel like. You know, I don't know. It's it's just part of the human condition. We don't we don't get to do that as much as we should. We don't, and it it really takes a try. It's yeah, like on your own, you can conceptualize a lot of things. But I was just happy to be on the team as an executive producer. Yeah, and to have that under my belt. Third film to date. Okay. So oh, wow. three films in two years. Okay. So, yes. Go ahead now. 
so to create. Yeah. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. So what is your purpose? What is my purpose? My purpose is to... Okay. <laughs> I love that. How about that? <laughs> it is right, to, I'm here to enhance. Yeah, to, I like to it. extract as much beauty as possible and to give much, as much beauty as possible. Yeah. Of course, I'm human. I have my moments. Yeah, yeah. But, and um, we all do. Yes. <laughs> um, to enhance, enhance what's around us. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. So what is your favorite way for that to show up? I mean, I know that you, you do the makeup and mm -hmm. that's your profession. And, mm -hmm. But is that your, your favorite way to sort of express your purpose? Or do you have other, mm -hmm. other enhancement ways? I think the main thing is listening. Okay. And letting people know you see them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think a lot of times we don't see, listen, really listen to each other. Yeah. And in listening, I'm, I've been able to extract things to really help the person see what they and also myself you yeah know? and i had that experience actually yesterday talking to someone i was like well i can share with you what i saw when you sat in my chair and i was right on target yeah. because i listened to him okay. and his journey is amazing he's going to be amazing oh, yeah. i can feel it in my heart yeah. do you feel like that happens a lot I, I feel like you know having worked in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and you know especially as a makeup artist mm -hmm. though because you work so closely with people like for me you know right. i was an art director when i worked in entertainment for anybody who doesn't know and so i would see celebrities all the time right. every yeah. now and then i would meet them right but it wasn't like i was constantly interacting mm -hmm. right but um for a makeup artist yeah. or a hair intimate. artist very, it's very intimate very, yes. so do you feel like it's over the time that you were actually doing the work that you developed sort of a sense of who was actually going to be able to make something out of the industry or do you feel like that's something you came with i would say everyone a lot of times that i've met they're driven they have ambition yeah. and some people have a, a deeper spark in their eyes yeah um i can think about a project that i worked on a few years ago i told the lead producers i said these two particular actresses are going to go very far and it was mm -hmm. an ensemble situation i won't and two actresses in particular are doing extremely well. Really? Not only episodic, commercials, Broadway. You're not going to you tell know. us who? Who is it? I will not. <laughs> because it was an ensemble of five. Okay. Women, and, and two in particular. I mean, all of them are talented. And yeah. all of them are, I know four for but sure. But two of them really rocked it. Uh, two of them, <laughs> I, in their vulnerability, yeah. I could see their maximum potential. Yeah, yeah. How about that? You know, and then they showed out, and they really had great careers. Yeah, and they're still, you know, they're still young and yeah. emerging, but they've had some great opportunities. Yes. Yeah, so. you know, that's one thing, and I don't speak in terms of regret because I don't believe in regret. I feel like we're all on our journey. Right. But for myself, that's one thing that if I were talking to my younger self, that mm. I would go back and say, like, don't be afraid to just be vulnerable, be who you are, even though it's scary. It is. To just yeah. show who you really, really are. Because yeah. I think that that is what is the key. Yes. Like, um, I forget who it was I was listening to the other day, but they were talking about how success, and, you know, the entertainment industry, I think, is a good example of mm -hmm. levels of success just because it's so visible. Right. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you can have a level of success anywhere. But they were saying that success is not about um talent it's mm -hmm. about your willingness your perseverance and your consistency to and dive in to yeah, yeah that willingness to just go full yeah. out yes. you know that, that's why a lot of people who don't necessarily have a lot of talent get mm -hmm. very successful in different things yeah. right yeah but and they were also saying how if you have a combination of that willingness and talent forget it you're right. unstoppable yes yes but i always think to myself like if i were like i said to talk to my younger self i would definitely mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. and for anybody out there and you're yes. and i feel like too you're never too old like even at my age now that's very true right very true. it's like it's always good to remind yourself that not only are you are you worthy of your expression mm -hmm. and being able to express yourself right but that being able to be 100 yourself is right. going to be the thing that has you get to where you right. want to go. I mean, Harrison Ford was, you know, a plumber. Yeah. Before, and Mar Morgan Freeman was started very late in life yeah. to become the star that he is now. Yeah. So that gives you an idea. I would say the past 20, 20 years or so. So he must have been in his mid to late 40s. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of how, how your life can just turn around. Totally. You know, if you go all in, and not saying it won't be easy, you know, there will be moments of... That we're oh, successes. Oh, <laughs> shit, what am I doing? And yeah. you know those moments. I've talked to you about those moments. Oh, yeah. Like, what am I doing? 40 something. Like, I'm doing this LA thing and this New York thing. Yeah. But I honestly can say somehow it works. Yeah. You know, it's just about trust. You I know, know that. so.
yeah. I hear that. And if nothing else, like if you're out there and it doesn't have to be in, in entertainment, yes. in anything, anything, and you're wondering, like, you know, how am I going to be able to do this thing? It's just this willingness to just go ahead and mm-hmm. listen to your gut and mm-hmm. express yourself fully. Yes. 100%. 100%. You know, yes. just be out there. I talk to so many women, especially wives. Mm -hmm. Uh, people who are raising children. I told you I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. It's, you know, it's so important that you understand it doesn't matter what stage of life you get at, you still have your creative expression. You still have who you are intuitively and on the inside and your willingness to stand for that is what's going to have you have what you want. Mm Mm-hmm. Very true. Right? Very true. Yeah. Like, like, just, okay, on a side note, just Mm -hmm. because I just thought of it. It wasn't live, but I remember when I first, and this is going to sound so crazy, first saw Rihanna's video, Ponda Replay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and she was, you know, there were so many pop stars, so many like little girls who were like, I'm so cute. Look at me trying to sing this song or whatever. But the first time I saw that video, I was like, she's going to be a superstar. And whether you like her music or not, or whether you're a fan or not, is really not here or there. Right. But it's just, she just had a willingness to just like, she was just giving who she was. Star power. Star power. Like she wasn't all out. Like Beyonce is a whole nother thing where she just, her thing is that she's all out with it. Right. That wasn't Rihanna's thing. Rihanna's thing was like, I'm here and Mm -hmm. I'm doing it and I'm proud of me doing it. (laughs) Yes. Feminine. The feminine. Yeah. Feminine goddess. Yes. Yes. Take a page from Rihanna's book. I don't know why I went went down that road. Yeah, you can see it. There's a spark there. Yeah, always, there's always a spark. Like there's when you're something. working with people, you're like, mm, like mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, I like that. I think that's cool. Okay, so speaking of self-expression, oh my Joe, just Rory joined Joe Artisan, the voice of an angel. Let oh, me tell you, really, yes, he and I used to work at the duplex together, and he works a lot at Brandy's on the Upper East Side. Nice. The okay. voice of an angel. You Beautiful. like until you heard him sing Hallelujah. Mm. Oh my God. Anyway, Joe, I'm glad you're here, honey. Mm -hmm. All right. So since we're talking about self-expression, name something that you identify as a true expression of who you are. A true expression. Writing. Writing. I love that. Um, A few years ago, I took a leap of faith. I moved to LA. I rented a loft. Oh, wow. And with the help of a friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And... um, a little, a little co-living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. uh, not co-living, but, you know, a little help. Yeah. So I sat down when I got into my apartment, no furniture, nothing. Okay. And I told myself I'm going to have this furnished in three months. And I did. Yeah. Like four months. Okay. And I said once, first thing I got was a desk and a chair. Oh. Yeah. And I sat Super down chill. and I made sure my Wi-Fi was working and I put my, put my laptop and I started work. Yeah. And I pumped out three books in a matter of two years. That's amazing. About a year and a half, not even two years. So yeah. one, as you know, came out, which was yeah. enhanced grooming. Then I have two more that are geared to come out. Yeah. So in September and then early spring next year. Oh, so, and it just flowed out of me. Yeah. And that's yeah. when I knew I made the right move. Yeah. The work wasn't necessarily coming in from the makeup portion of my life, but the words and the ideas were flowing. The that's writing awesome. yeah. is my answer. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And I know from your books that, you know, obviously it's enhanced beauty. You talk a a lot Mm -hmm. about like beauty and the ways that you actually enhance beauty and what that really takes and the things that you saw and things like that. But what's something that's, because I know that you mentioned Mm -hmm. that you also are like, I know you're big in personal growth because we talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite thing to sort of like just sit down and get into when you're writing about stuff? Well, like, the, do you journal? Do you like? I journal journal? every morning. uh, And that's kind of like my meditation gratitude, you know, 10 to 20 things I say every morning in a book and a journal that I'm grateful for. Yeah. And that sparked actually two books. Really? One is called a hundred days of gratitude, oh, which is that. coming out this spring in this fall. Sorry. And then the other one is the flow. Okay. And the flow is not only about gratitude, but it's how you get through traumatic situations oh, to the wow. other side. Yeah. And I sure, I go really deep and personal about yeah. things that have happened to me in my life. Like through the gauntlet, honey. Like Yes. Through, through it all. <laughs> it's been hard and it's, you're like yes, ready to... Yes, through the fire. Yes. yes through the fire. Ah, so. we've been, this audience <laughs> and me, we've been through that. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, getting over to the other side. So yeah, that's it. I love Gratitude, that. Gratitude. So. Okay, and that's coming out too. Yes, that's okay. in uh, fall. Yes. I love it. Okay. All right, so next question. And those of you who are listening on the Facebook Live, mm-hmm. you know that you can actually answer the questions too. Feel free if you want to get vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> right? We love to share and interact about it, but I love that you guys are just here. You can watch and listen too. Yes. All right, so our next question is, what is your deepest romantic desire? 
Oh, as simple. <laughs> Traveling with my partner. Okay. My partner in crime. Doing amazing things together. You I know, like that. where both our lifestyles um, are in sync. Yeah. And we can take extended extensions, of, not vacations for a but to go away and like, hey, I'm going to write. You're going to do what you do. But to be able to go off the coast yeah. and have a wonderful dinner in the evening. Ooh. But still connected to, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. traveling with my Traveling the world, working, sort of being yeah. laptop entrepreneur. Yeah, laptop. yes. <laughs> you know, I, I do it on my own, but I'd love to do it with someone. Yeah. You know, so, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to get into that someone mm-hmm. in a couple mm-hmm. questions. I see Reverend Brown just joined. What's up, Shanton? Hi. Um, okay, who would someone have to be as a person for you to consider them as a possible soul match? I guess we're already getting into it. <laughs> we're diving right into the person that... D'Angelo wants to be traveling with. Hi, Jacqueline. That's deep. Um, <laughs> we did a love coaching session yes. a few years ago. Yes. I think it was after a trip from Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. I went to World Pride two years ago in Amsterdam. Oh, wow. Ironically, so a two-year cycle. Yeah. And um, I remember myself running away from the experience. And uh, I remember the that. person looked like a god. <laughs> Bronzed, golden. Good looking enough to be scary. Beautiful. Great smile. Everything. Yeah. You know? And... Um, just very engaging. I couldn't find anything wrong, but I felt I froze and oh. I took off running. Yeah. And then we did the love coaching, which truly helped. Oh, good. It helped me understand the dialogue that was going on in my own head. Yeah, yeah. And how I was pushing things away. Yeah. And so that question is can be very long because you know we wrote a list. Yes. <laughs> And the list was not as long as my lists were in the past. It mm. was more precise. Yes. But a few things was like being spiritually connected. You know, um, I'm not talking about holy roller. I'm talking about spiritually connected where the world, you know, yeah. philanthropically. Yeah. Um, like you're there for yeah, you, the, there the for community and the community world and for ourselves, yes. you know. Absolutely. Um, passion. Yes. You know. <laughs> that was a tourist. So important. That's important. <laughs> yeah. So um, really? that's important. Yes. Yeah. You know, and there's a ton of other things, but I think, and oh, one last thing, it's just having mutual respect for one another. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I see sometimes relationships and friendships, I watch their relationship. Partners, family, the in laws. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's a good. It's just respect. You want to marry into a good family, yeah, honey. Yeah, just good respect, you yeah, know, on both sides, you know? Absolutely. So honoring our mother and our father, you know, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah that's all. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally so, get that. Yeah. I, I love that you're bringing up when we were coaching, too, because it's mm-hmm. so funny. I always say that no matter who you are, you know, we, we get so caught up in, like, gender and all of that. and But really, we're all, you know, basically right. the same human needs, Right. right. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Marissa Peer. Mm. She does uh, hypnotherapy. And she says, she's very British. She's mm-hmm. very British. Mm-hmm. And she says that there's three basic oh, issues. Yes. I know, yes. You've heard of her, right? <laughs> the three basic issues that she says is that either it's an I'm not enough story yes. or I'm, an, I'm different. Right. Like, you know, when people say, well, I just can't do those things and mm-hmm. that's just not for me. Mm-hmm. Or the third one is, and I think this is the most common because mm-hmm. I even have it myself and mm-hmm. I, you know, it's something I'm very present to. Okay. And I remember when we were working together at came up it's mm-hmm. i want something mm-hmm. but either i don't believe i can have it right. or there, i have a context that keeps me from, right. from having yeah, it so that's where that yeah. resistance comes yes. up where it's like someone who seems so amazing is right there in front of you but mm-hmm. it's like wait yeah, <laughs> yeah. now i gotta run away because yeah. you seem too good and even before i moved to la you t- we when we did the coaching mm-hmm. what did you ask the universe for yeah. and i told you and i said it didn't happen like and you said with Positivity, you're like, yes, it did. Yeah. Think about who you've dated in the past few weeks or month. And all of a sudden, this person popped into my head. I was like, was right that there. Entity. The package wasn't exactly, when I say package, I mean <laughs> the outer. Yeah, the outer, yeah, the yeah. height, the, the weight, and all of that. Yeah. But the kindness, the sense of family, and the generosity. Yeah. You know, and he was very established and. Being very supportive, but of course, I was like the runaway bride or groom. Like, <laughs> like you know, I gotta go. I was like, too much, too, too much. Too <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, honey. So. And I think too, you were really good. I remember with just the because um, sometimes people resist. One thing that I do with clients is we get to a point where it is about making a list. Yeah. But I'm very careful because here's the thing that a lot of us do and that we're taught to do because mm-hmm. we've maybe read the secret or whatever where we just want to list out like you know bullet points like right. boom 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 right. boom. It's got to have a big dick. It's got to make six figures. It's got to right. do this. Gotta, <laughs> you know what I right. mean? And that there's nothing wrong with it. A nice lot of people too. do it. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but for me, the, you know, in, within my coaching, this is a little bit of a plug here, mm-hmm. you know, and you remember, it's yeah. so important to get really in tune with what your real core values are. Right. Like you're saying, you want someone who you can be in their family. Right, right. And that's a core value. Right. Like family is important mm-hmm. to me, that right. we're respectful of each other's family. And the final step that people forget to do after mm-hmm. they make their list, right. their heart-centered core value list, mm-hmm. is to actually live up to their list, to be their list. Right, right. 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 Right? Yes. Rather than have this sort of grocery shopping Mm -hmm. where it's like, I want this person to come with all of these things. It's like, what am I doing to bring into the table? Right. Right. Yeah. And whether you're, you're, you are, um, someone who's with someone of the same gender or not the same gender, you can come with the same core value qualities. And that's the important thing more more than anything. Right. Very powerful. Like that's the human. Hi, Roy Fisher, who just got here. Hi, honey. We went to high school together. Wow. Yeah. Even middle school. Hey. Some of these people I've just known for years. It's so supportive. I love it. But yeah, like like I remember you were really good with that though, because yes, you yes, you yes. like were ready to dive right in. Yeah. A lot of times people resist that because we think that there's some outside instant gratification way that someone's going to be that that's right. going to make it good. Right. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be and vulnerable. You know, it's scary to be vulnerable. Yeah. No, so. totally. And also, we're in such an instant gratification culture. We think that something outside of us is going to be the answer, mm. and it's so not. That's true. It's all internal. It's true. You know, and I hate to be so definitive about it because then it's like, oh, there's no possibility for anything else. But really the... The idea of soul mating and feeling like, you know, you have that love, Mm -hmm. it's all internal work to be done. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I could soapbox about that Mm -hmm. forever. (laughs) You know how I do. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Oh, what's Jimmy Allen says? He says, you have to be your list. Exactly. And not expect someone to... To everything to be everything for us that we are unwilling to be for ourselves. That's exactly. very true. Exactly. Yeah, I say that yeah, all like you I can't agree. expect someone to be for you what you're unwilling to be for I yourself. Agree. Yeah. I love that, Jimmy. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Who do you admire most in your personal life? Wow. That this is actually I can think of a top a few women that I know at the time. Yeah. Men as well. Um, you have a pretty good field to pull from. Yeah, you know, I have a, a lot of people. A good friend base and family base. I will. I'll just generalize in a sense that people closest to me, mm. I love the parents that they are. Mm. So if you know who you are out there, the parents that you are. Yeah. You know, um, my sister, um, brother Andre, and Tarek, and Sonia, and Eugene. You know. Couple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sonia, yeah. they were so nice. Yeah, Charisse and, and you know Angel as parents. Yeah, and I can go on and on. I just love seeing their whole, you know, from being kids together. Yeah, you know, and hitting the clubs in our twenties. You know, rolling in at seven a.m., nine a.m. in the morning, and now being mom and dad, and seeing them as parents and how truly authentic they are. Yeah. You know, and they're not forgetting who they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind one friend. I'm like, girl, you were like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, lay off your just 14 year old. you. <laughs> you were like that. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, it's beautiful. Do you think that if you found the person that, that be your match person, mm-hmm. do you think that you'd want to raise children with them? Um, I would honestly say if they had children, mm-hmm. I would be okay with that. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't consciously seek it out. You wouldn't pursue it? No. I love kids. They love me. Yeah. Um, I'm like, honey, they like walk in the room. They're like, Ugh. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But, um, because I was always really kind of the guardian watching over my younger siblings, you mm-hmm. know, latchkey kid yeah. in the seventies and eighties. Um, I got my fill yeah, of yeah. having that responsibility. That's so funny. Yes. Cause I feel like there's a lot of people, I don't know if you've ever listened to Tiffany Haddish tell her story. Some of it. Yes. She talks about her whole like yes, situation. And yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of times, especially when older siblings have had to take responsibility for younger mm-hmm. siblings, mm-hmm. they tend to not want to be parents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When they get yes. to be adults. I'm a great uncle, great <laughs> yeah, godfather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love all the kids, you know, within my world yeah. and beyond. I think that's why I do a lot of charity work that I do. Yeah. Um, 
definitely want kids to process be protected sure. um but do i want them my reason. own no <laughs> but you i honestly i have a friend she said she never wanted kids she has such a great mom yeah yeah so i can honestly say you never know yeah you never know they say as soon as you have them it changes you no matter what you were feeling oh, i believe that yeah, i believe yeah. that and i'm always conscious of friends that have children yeah. like you know what i think I need from them as a friend. I'm yeah. like, but they're a mom, they're a dad, and they have responsibilities. That's yeah. not you. Yeah. So you have to somehow work within that, you know, schedule. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I so I don't like <laughs> I like to create my own. So. Right? <laughs> Professional schedule. Right. Are great. Right. <laughs> as long as there's a check at the end of that right. schedule, that's how I can Yeah, but to. you know, when it's personal, you know, things can go awry. Yeah. yeah. No. So finding that balance. Yeah. No, Hi, Xavier, who just joined us. Feel mm -hmm. free, honey, to chime All in. Right. Um, okay, so what accomplishment are you most proud of? I would say when I've said I wanted to do something, mm -hmm. it may have taken a year, seven years or ten years yeah. that I actually would do. It. Yeah. You know, every city I said I wanted to visit, every place I've moved thus far, mm -hmm. wanting to write a book. So whatever I set my mind to that I actually accomplished. Yeah. yeah. So I know that it's always in the ether and yeah. it's coming, coming, you know, yeah, yeah. and I'm coming towards it. It's coming towards me. So, yeah. Let me ask you about this. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about your Emmy win. Okay. Was that something that you had an expectation of? Not, not at it all. It just kind of like came. Not at all. Um, one thing I learned when as an artist mm -hmm. working with so many different personalities, give them a thousand, yeah. And that's all I was doing because, you know, I was doing hair and makeup for the show. Mm -hmm. And I was begging the line producer, producer, almost every day to add a hair person. Yeah. Like for the pilot season and the first season. Yeah. And it just wasn't in the budget. And which I, he would definitely give me extra money to hire more hairstylists and sometimes makeup artists when we needed them. Mm -hmm. But there were days I was just doing a lot of people in my own. Yeah. Effie, when I got the first nomination, I was like, ah, oh, that's nice. You know, it really, I went, you know, mm -hmm. to the daytime Emmys in LA and that was fun. Yeah. With Hadia, you Did know, you? she came with yeah, me. Yeah. And um, the following year I left and I heard I got two nominations from the attorney on the show. Yeah. The moment something happened, I was on upstate New York working on a project with a Canadian production company. I'm in my hotel room at the end of the evening and I got this really weird sensation i was like oh my god we won an emmy seconds later my phone beeped it was sharon and no, i'm sorry uh sharon from the view uh -huh. she goes you guys beat us i'm like hair or makeup she goes hair oh wow so there you go yeah and i was happy yeah. you know but i still didn't take it in yeah and even when i told the crew the next day they, they were so excited yeah you know got a cake and everything and then i was still numb to it yeah and then as time progressed i was like mm. <laughs> right. I don't know something that's Oscar. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I then know. that's when it shifted. Yeah, you know. So now it's different. Can I tell you something mm -hmm. about that? That whole because I remember it. You know, every season mm -hmm. around Emmy time, right. just in the fifteen years that I was in television, like yeah, it was always on Tyra and yeah. All the shows. Yeah. No matter what you were on around that time, mm -hmm. it got really buzzy. Yeah, right. And here's the thing: this is not like a woe is me story because it actually it it caused a very beautiful breakthrough mm -hmm. for me around mm -hmm. worth. Okay. So art direction also gets gets right. an award, that's true. right? Yes. As as a category, mm -hmm. and. I was, when I was working in television, because it didn't align with, as much as I love to do it, I'm a creative person, right. I love the arts, that's mm -hmm. what I went to school to learn how to do. Right. In front of the camera or behind the camera? Well, here's the thing, being mm -hmm. behind the camera mm -hmm. didn't align with what is my purpose. Exactly. Right? <laughs> being in front of the camera totally does. Right. It, you know, being able to connect with people and talk to people, that aligns, right. it makes me feel very purposeful. That's true. That's true. You know, whether I'm creating something on the spot mm -hmm. or, you know, showing off something that I did, mm -hmm. whatever, it, you know, or talking to people about something. But because I was, I was off purpose or right. out of purpose in mm -hmm. what I was doing, mm -hmm. it never occurred to me as a possibility that I would ever mm -hmm. win any kind of award okay. like that. Okay. And I do believe that our thoughts create our reality. It does. Right? It does. Yeah. And I remember one of the producers, Kamar, mm -hmm. who I absolutely yeah, adore. Kumar, yeah. 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 He said to me at one point, we were having a conversation, we're sitting around eating and we were talking about, you know, the Emmy Awards. Mm -hmm. And it might have been the year that you won. Okay. 
but before, you know, when people were getting nominated, right. whatever, mm -hmm. and we were just talking, he's like, well, you know, what about you? Or, you know, do you think you'll get nominated? Mm -hmm. And like he, when he said that in the moment, it almost felt violent to me because wow. I had such a story of like, no, like, right. I'm not going to get nominated for an Emmy. Like that will wow. never happen. Wow. Right? Really? Yeah. Wow. But I will say what the positive that came out of having that story. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Kai. Kai says, hey, Candace. Hey, Kai. Candace. Hey. The positive that came out of having that story mm -hmm. is that I got to look back and realize that not only, you know, and I, and I strongly believe this, do I believe our thoughts create our reality? Very true. But also how I was underselling myself in so many ways. Yeah. Like, first of all, not really being purpose aligned. Right. I was totally underselling myself and also not feeling worthy of something like right. that. A lot of like, artists are like that. Yeah. yeah. It's the imposter syndrome. Right. It's the, you know, right. Or feeling like you're not in the right place. Right. Mm -hmm. And I guess I share all of that to say that, you know, I think, like you said, a lot of artists are like that. Yes. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that, you know, it's like we, we think in terms of wanting to have these accomplishments and things like that. Right. But, um, you know, you really want to allow yourself to, to become purpose aligned if you can. That's or you want to allow yourself to believe that you can. Right. That's true. You know, have yes. what it is in order to accomplish it. You deserve a seat in the Right? Period. Yeah. yeah, for whatever it is that that aligns with who you are, you right. deserve a seat in the room. Yes, interesting. I like Show that. up. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So, what is your most desired future vision? <laughs> Part of um, taking on this new project, right? Mm -hmm. um, that starts in July through next April. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know what? Get out of debt. So number one, yes. That's actually, my most Me desire too. is to get out of debt. Me too. And number two, out of bad debt. Out though. of bad debt. There's and good debt. The good debt I want is part two of that. Yeah. And <laughs> there's, you know, a place where I want a home or two. Mm -hmm. You know, and so investment in real estate more. Like so that. a home that I own, multiple homes. Can we do one on the beach, husbands? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's definitely on my radar. So okay. one, one definitely will start in a desert. Okay. You know, you know. Right. Definitely in a desert um, in California. Okay. <laughs> so that gives you an idea. Yeah, yeah. All the gays out there. <laughs> um, and then from there, you know, definitely probably Mexico. Or, yeah, yeah. Or second or third. I love that. Yes. Awesome. So that's the goal. All right. I love it. Okay. So what is something that you always do when you're alone? I'm always doing. It. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Can I pass on that? Uh, can I pass on? Well, that? here I'll tell you this. Here's the caveat about masturbate. Okay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I think <laughs> masturbation. Right. You're like before you tell me why I can't pass. <laughs> Fine. Give me right? the answer. That's well, you're it. not alone, honey. Because yeah. I think I, when I was taking this, I, I started this quiz like months ago, uh -huh. and I think that was my answer too. So yeah. don't feel bad. Loving myself, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yes, it's all it. about self care. <laughs> okay. What's something that very few people know about you besides that? Oh God. <laughs> I can tell you something that mm. is interesting. When I get in a moment of self doubt uh -huh. or self pity. Mm -hmm. And I'll walk outside my door, and immediately I'll see someone with a major handicap. Mm. Smiling, happy, going about their day, yeah. living their best life. Yes. And I'm like... Like ingratitude. And I literally go, thank you, God, mm. because that's what I was meant to see. So whatever little drama that I'm about to stir up and create within my own head, yeah. uh, this person has no arm. Yeah. This person has no legs. Or, and they're living their best life. They're yeah. happy. They're smiling. They're not always happy and smiling, but the ones that have crossed my path yeah. has shown me or where. And yeah. So, like, yeah. Like the universe is saying, yeah. okay. So, yeah. <laughs> this so is and how it happens it often. It's almost like an omen. It's yeah. like, well, let me show you what could be. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it snaps me up really quick. I totally get yeah. that. Because it's so easy, especially with social media, to be, you know, we call it com compare and despair. Yeah, yes, yeah. Right? Yeah. But you're absolutely right. That moment when you're just, like, so down on things, mm -hmm. it's like you have a healthy body that's strong, you eat every day, you have a roof over your exactly. head. Exactly. And so many people out there don't. They don't. And they <laughs> still find joy. Yeah. And I would say to anyone, travel, especially to third world countries, and experience culture. Mm -hmm. 
see kids laughing and adults laughing and interacting and even wanting to invite you into their home for dinner when they have so little. Yeah. And that, to me, <laughs> that's true happiness. Yeah. More so than the material. Um, absolutely. You know, like possessions and being such a couple. Right. In our <laughs> um, and not that that's a bad thing, but, that's not bad. you know, yeah. um, but also being in gratitude with the small. Yeah. Yeah. That. Hi, Valentino, who just joined us. Welcome, Great honey. Name. I know, Valentino. right? Valentino. Um, okay. What's something that you feel a little guilty about? You know, I feel guilty when I shop. Do you? I really do. What do you think that's about? I don't. I think it's from my. Is it because like, you're thinking about debt? Or is it like. No, what, what is no it? it's really. Because sometimes I'll work really hard for months and months and months at a time buy a thing for myself yeah. I'll buy it for friends or take a friend out to dinner but I won't do anything really for myself yeah. so I think it's giving myself permission to enjoy whatever prosperity that comes and where that comes from I really don't know yeah. I actually kind of do I think growing up in the 80s 90s especially in Chicago and New York mm -hmm. uh you didn't want to be too flashy with where you went shopping. Yeah, yeah. You know, it all went in your book bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you that makes Vuitton, sense. You can walk out on Fifth Avenue with a Louis bag. Yeah. But by the time you got uptown or into Brooklyn, that was going in your backpack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think I still have a little residual from that. Mm -hmm. I don't like talking what I've done. Yeah. Know? So I think it's more private. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a private person anyway with doing a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. So, that's I it. totally hear that. I'm a little bit. I'm. I'm like that too. Cause I feel like those kinds of things are how we develop our money story. Right. But I did. I did some work around like sort of excavating why I had mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is this: like, I'm someone who I have sort of a conflicting money story from the past. Like, right. I'm I'm transforming it now. Mm -hmm. But what I used to do is, no matter how much money I made. Mm -hmm. I, I would often set myself up to be paycheck to paycheck. Oh, wow. It didn't right. matter how much money I was making because right. that was the mindset. Right. It's like I didn't want to have too much Scarcity. of it. Scarcity. Scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. And also guilt about shopping also because my mom, mm -hmm. such a shopper. Like I, I feel like it was a little bit of an addiction, okay. a lot of bit of an addiction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like bless her heart. Yeah. I love her. So love her pieces. Price tags Like closets full of stuff. Wow. You know, even in the, the, the house that they still own. Like right. just closets full of things. Wow. Wow. That most of them, you know, a majority of them never even worn. That was her story from her. That past. was her story. Right. But as a child, you know, I've always been, you know, very much a middle. I'm a middle child. Okay. And so I always felt like it was sort of my responsibility to save her from herself. Right. And so when she'd want to buy us things or buy me things, You'd I'd always go, no. no, 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 mm. no. I, you know, I'm okay because I felt like I was, you know, being a superhero a little bit you know, as a child. Something just hit me. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of that stuff that's in the closet. And around, I wonder if she says, "Oh, I'll get this for one of my daughters." Very I wonder possible. if it's because sometimes parents do that. Yeah, even though they can't give it to you. Yeah, it's just like, well, I, well, I have to just in case she's here. Yeah. yeah, if so. I ever get her to go to church with me, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can put her in this white suit. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, I so. I wouldn't put it past yeah. her. Yeah, I'm sure there's yeah. pieces for you and your sister in yeah. there somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes. totally. I mean, and and that was part of it too. I think. What sort of fed the need to do it mm -hmm. and what allayed her own guilt was mm -hmm. that I'm buying this for my children, too. Right, you know, right. like, she'd be like, it's not just all for me. Right. It's for my kids, too. One for you, two for me. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So we have a couple more questions okay. and then we're going to start wrapping up. Okay. Who's your celebrity soulmate or just your sexual crush? <laughs> and you might end up meeting that person and working with funny. them. funny. Um, or maybe you already did. It went from... Like sexy celebrity that ooh, I just wanted to be with, mm -hmm. but I love the man that he has probably always was, uh, and that would be George Clooney. Oh, uh, and I had the pleasure of not that's working your with type, him. like definitely yeah, so physically. <laughs> so, and I had the pleasure of not working with him, but mm -hmm. I was walking down a street in New York. Okay. I don't want to be too pretentious, but <laughs> I was walking down Avenue. Madison Avenue, and I like to window shop. I like to stroll and look and see what's coming out each mm -hmm. season fun i've yeah. always done that since i was a child i would go to downtown chicago and do the same yeah uh, um long story short i passed this really popular restaurant on madison and this guy was bent over in his gorgeous canary yellow sweater oh and i saw salt and pepper hair and he was playing with the dog uh -huh. but i noticed there was a big security guard right by him uh -huh. and then the person that with whose dog it was and then he looked up and i was walking towards we locked eyes and i was like hey how are you 
and there's George Clooney. Oh my goodness. And I said in the most casual way, hi, how are you? And I kept it moving. I didn't yeah. freak out. You're like, of course, cool. when I passed him, I was like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so George, George Clooney. Uh, but I love what he and his wife have involved, evolved into, yeah. which is just uh, oh, so, social justice. Uh, they're really focused on yeah. They're really focused on the middle. Uh, they're doing presidential things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. What, I do. Actually, and I won't get into the politics, but <laughs> the yeah. global. Yeah, I like situation. what he's morphed into. Yeah, and via his wife. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Right. I think that's a good one. Very yes. distinguished looking. Yes, and you know, from what I understand, funny and yeah. charismatic, but also very caring. I thought he was hot back on Facts of Life. I always thought he was hot. <laughs> right? you know? And that's that's always been kind of my type. Yeah, bushy, thick hair, bushy brow, beautiful yeah. eyes, you know. Okay. Yeah, but that can change because, you know, the package can come very differently. That's true. You know? That's very and true. I realized that as I got older, I'm like, you know, D'Angelo, don't push people away because they look a certain aesthetic. You yeah. know, it's like, be open. Yeah. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And sometimes people, you know, I was in a relationship for 13 years and it took a year of him chasing me because I just didn't think he was physically attractive. Mm. I was young. I was 19. <laughs> but a year of him chasing me. I thought he was a nice guy. Right, you know, right. we worked together. But the thing I learned about that relationship is how attractive someone can become if you just open yourself up to to loving them love. and letting them love you. Love. Like, all of a sudden, the physical attraction just becomes... Yeah. Not that it becomes unimportant, but you, you, feel, you start to feel physical attraction right. when you let someone love right. you and open yourself to, up to loving them. But don't you find when you are in a relationship... Mm -hmm. and make love to your partner mm -hmm. it is more intense at least for me more intense with that partner as the love grows and evolves mm -hmm. you know than just a random hookup yes because you don't really know and understand that person's body yeah. and their nuances and you know whatever intimate things you do before or after yeah so i think the whole idea of love yeah. is a very beautiful thing i think that what you're talking about though is mm -hmm. also a sign of emotional intelligence Yes, yeah. because I think you know clearly. Like as we get older, we evolve more and more into it. We're right. all on different journeys as far as emotional intelligence right. is concerned. Okay. But how that um, affects intimacy is that I think that when you're young and you're maybe not so emotionally intelligent, right. you're just you know, horny. Mm -hmm. you're just horny. <laughs> you think that what you're doing is is right. you know whether it's casual or not. Mm -hmm. You think that it's like the best thing just because it's what you wanted right. in that moment. Right. You know, but I think that as we evolve, and sometimes we evolve very young. Right. Sometimes, it, for me, it took me four decades <laughs> to get to an evolution mm -hmm. where I was like, I get it yes. that, you know, this emotional connection, it makes this so much sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. It happened and for I, me in my late 20s, you know. I just 20s. knew, I was like, wow, sex is getting better. Yeah. I was like, because I'm connected yeah. on a deeper level, you yeah. know, and not just uh, a superficial. And I tell guys <laughs> when I'm dating, I'm like... I'm gonna have sex right away. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Because I want to get to know you. Totally. You know. And thank you for breaking that stereotype too. Mm -hmm. Because I do think that gay men in general, yeah, definitely get the like the hard story that it's like yeah. all you want to do is have sex. Yeah. And it's which prominent. is so not it true. It is prominent though. It's prominent. Yeah. But I, you know, I mm -hmm. have a lot of friends who say the same thing that you say really? that. There is an importance to have, hmm. and there's one I've been trying to fix you up with for years, but both of y'all are so busy. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, is that I think it's always assumed that because men are attributed with just being in their animal brain right, around physicality, mm -hmm. yeah, that if you're, if you're, um, you know, with another man, that that's all that you would want between mm -hmm. you, but that's so not the case. Yeah, and there's you know, the and sacred like feminine and the sacred masculine, yeah. you know, and if you respect both, yeah. you know, that's how I think it we all have both. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. I want it to flow, is just understand that not only our physical net connection, it's sacred. Yeah. And I'm not talking about monogamy and all of that. I'm talking about just being with someone deeply connected. Yeah. You know. Totally. And just honoring that. It's yes. a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we are so, like, we're already at 55. The time goes by so quickly. Wow. okay. Yes, and I want to make sure that you get to let people know whatever you want to let people know. Okay. This is your plug time. What okay. do you want to tell the people? How do you want them to find you? Okay. What do you want them to find? So you can find me on Facebook, D'Angelo Thompson, and also on Instagram, at DTBeauty71. And if you want to check out any of my books, they're on Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, AuthorHouse.com, Enhanced Beauty, Men's Grooming is my most recent book, and more will come, more about gratitude. And
Awesome. And we're going to put the link about that yes. in the comments, Thank right? you. Yes. People, yes, I absolutely. Of mm-hmm. course. So if you want to get D'Angelo's book, you'll be able to get the link. Mm-hmm. And then also on social media, you want to give them like your Instagram and stuff like that? Uh, yes. Again, Instagram is at DTBeauty71. And then also Facebook is D'Angelo Thompson. Did you already do that? And yes, I missed I did. it. Sorry about that. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> All right. So thank you so much, my sweet thank love. You. Thank oh you. my goodness. I do this. So thank you. Right. I've yes. been wanting you on the show for a long time. Yes. You thank know, you. like you said, you sort of had, had relocated to the West coast, mm-hmm. but you know, we have you for a little while. Now, summer. Right. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll have you on again when I'm mm-hmm. just having, you know, cause w- once our badass bachelor series is over, we're going to go back to just talking to people talking to experts. I have some other authors that are coming on. That's great. You can talk about your upcoming. I want to, talk a little bit about your gratitude book when you're ready. I would love to. Yeah, that would be a good so, time to September, come back. We, we will launch it. Yeah. yeah. We'll have you come back. Thank you. And as you guys know, I have my 12-week intensive that's coming up. 12 women, 12 w- weeks. Get right with mom for the sake of your love life. That's intensive, valuable. right? Mm-hmm. The result is that 12 women who've been surviving a painful or abusive mother-daughter relationship will move the past out of the way and throw out all of that emotional baggage and become vibrant, alive, magnetic, and passionate while creating the love life that lights you up and supports your happiness because that's what it's all about Mm -hmm. right if you're interested in doing that you can go to my business page Candace Harper Love Coach and click on the link to fill out the application that you're interested and you know if we find we're a fit we'll have a call about it you can learn more talk Mm -hmm. about it see if it's something that might work for you yes Um, there's that you can follow me on Instagram at Candy Love Coach I know the armed radio people are going to be going soon I'm just going to say that on radio people until next time, never forget that you're a love machine. If you ever start to feel like you aren't getting the love you need, just make more and then ask for candy yes. for when you guys leave. But I want to also say, I, you, you guys, I was um, announcing about the Urban Oasis brunch, which we did yesterday. Mm. Chef mm-hmm. Keisha did not disappoint. The food was amazing. And I got everybody to participate in my tandem origami game, which I don't know wow. if you've ever played no. that before. No. I do this thing, this game with partners, mm-hmm. tandem origami. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you what all the rules are because if you ever get a chance to play it, okay. you know, no, but it's a lot of fun. You that get to learn good. who you are in a partnership. Right, right. <laughs> like in real time, you know, and it's a timed game, so it's kind of under pressure. Right, right. So that's something that I think I'm going to be doing. I haven't done a workshop in a while, but, mm-hmm. you know, if you guys reach out to me and say it's something you're interested in doing, I might arrange some sort of event where we can okay. do some stuff like that, some cool, connective cool. games. Yeah. And, you know, you guys know this year's theme. Okay. Armed Radio is leaving us in a minute. Armed Radio, you know, I love Bye, you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Right. Thank Bye, you, Armed Radio. Radio. This summer's theme is Badass Bachelor Bachelor Summer. So here are the criteria. I'm focusing on all the good men out there, all the ladies that like have bought into the sad statistics that it's a unicorn, that good single men aren't available anymore. We're going to dispel it. They're out there. (laughs) So what I want you to be is single over 35, living into your purpose, joyful and loving to talk about it. You know, wanting to come on and be vulnerable and honest about yourself. You might be perfect. Mm -hmm. Hit us up. I'll put a link in the comments and you can follow it and arrange a little pre-interview and we'll have a little chat. Yes. See okay. if you're somebody. I only have a couple more spots left in August. So I'd like to fill. And um, I think that that is it. Next week, we have Jimmy Allen. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel where I'm putting all the edits of the shows. Uh, leave me comments with hashtag Ask for Candy and email askforcandypodcast at gmail.com. And for the Facebook Live people, thank you for being thank here. You. I love you so much, too. Until next time, never forget, you are also love machines. And if you ever start feel like you're not feeling like you're not getting the love.